Dad. Don't have to edit this. You're in the setup. I'm warning you ahead of time. If I look angry, it's just my face. Blame my parents, not me. All I did was grow this. That's it. <laughs> Well, appreciate you. The starts to these sessions sometimes usually are screwed up. It's always by me, it seems. It's never about our guests. So um, glad everyone could join us today for Inside the TMC family. I have with me one of my favorite new people I met for the first time this year in the network, Femi IE. And he is the VP of Branch Operations for Revolution Mortgage. Thanks for doing this with me. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Um, you are always a vibrant person on our calls. We always appreciate your perspective. Um, and I look forward to kind of like getting to know your you and your career a little bit more this morning. So share with me what your first job ever was. My first, I don't know, I was a bit of a hustler growing up when I was a little kid. Uh, I was selling Jolly Ranchers in seventh grade and doing all kinds of stuff. I was, I've always been working one little thing or another. But my first legitimate job was actually working at a store called the Wizards Tower in Nashua, New Hampshire. It was a store that did like um, role playing games and the uh, tabletop uh, uh, miniature games and like uh, card games like Magic the Gathering and other stuff like that. So I was like 15 years old or so and I was just there so much that they were like, you're like a rat, why don't you start working? We'll pay you to start doing a little bit of that. <laughs> and I got into uh, starting to work and I've never stopped since. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. And I can totally see you as a little kid. Um, I imagine there were there were some challenges there when you were you were growing up. <laughs> oh, let's <laughs> I grew up in I grew up in Nashua, New Hampshire. It was literally I, I, I described it as a southern civilized end of New Hampshire. We had paved roads and indoor plumbing. But you know, it's still New Hampshire, it's middle of nowhere. That's that's just what it was. You were still trying to find things to keep you occupied. Um, tell me how you got into mortgage. I don't know if this is a safe for work story, but long story short, I used to work at a bar when I was in college, and there was one of the bartenders had a husband that I was like, eh, not really high on. And I saw him like just driving down the street one day in this big Cadillac Escalade. I was like, Pete, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm working at this place, Synergy Direct Mortgage, making a ton of money, whatever. So at some point I had retired for a little bit after getting divorced the full time. I sold my business. I sold the building that I owned and I just took some time off. And I said, I'm going to get back to work. So I walked into this mortgage company. I'm like, does this person still work here? They say, yeah. I say, is he a productive employee? They say, yeah. So I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> I literally walked in the door laughing at that and within, I don't know, within three months I was the top sales guy and then, you know, it just kept going and going and from there it snowballed into, hey, our group ended up leaving this to go start with a correspondent lender because this was around crash time and uh, so I started going from the origination place where I could help uh, make a bigger help in processing. And then from processing, I ran into underwriting. And then from underwriting, I ran into audits and projects. And then from audits and projects, it ran into training, which ran into the next piece of the next piece. And at some, some point, you just gain enough experience that you realize, wow, I can really help here, 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 and here. And you know, you just kind of end up on the back end of things. Yeah, not everybody in our industry has that great experience where you're totally like rounded out and you understand the whole process. So that is just awesome. I don't know if it's awesome. I think it's just you you wake up with night sweats of ATRQM issues, of Rikako <laughs> issues, of buyback issues, whatever's going on. All it does is give you more headaches and more things to be worried about. Like one of these days I want to go back to doing just one lane and only worry about one thing. And the rest of it will just magically happen. <laughs> that is all of our dreams, let me tell you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That is all of our dreams. Tell me about when you got into the industry, obviously you're a go-getter. What is there one thing that you wish that you would have known back then that just like would have been so helpful for you to have learned sooner? <sighs> to have learned sooner, um, I, 
I hope that everybody in in sales actually understands what happens in underwriting, um, understanding what risk management is, and that it's not an us versus them, that it's a team sport, that if you just happen to get something past them, it doesn't mean it's not going to come back to bite you. Um, so just understanding when I got started, really what happens after the loans cleared to close, what happens after closing, what happens in shipping, what happens in post closing, what an EPO is, what an EPD is, how that affects the uh, the uh, the balance sheet for the company when something goes wrong. Understanding all of that may have made me a better originator where I would have been more focused on completeness and accuracy. Um, I've always been a big proponent of never doing my work for who I'm turning it into. I do my work for who I'm turning it into, turns it into. Because there's no way, there's no reason for me to say, oh, I like doing something in this particular process because it makes it easy if the next person has to change it. So I take a I take a couple of steps down the line, say, what's the end goal of what we're trying to get to? And then I try to make my process line up with that end goal. So knowing that earlier, I wouldn't have been fighting with the people at SunTrust once I got a clear to close and then they were like, oh, you didn't complete this, you didn't complete this, you didn't complete this. And yep. like, I, I, I can think of the the number of times Kieran McAdally, who was our original rep when I was in sales uh, at SunTrust, was like, you didn't complete the Honda section. I'm like, what does that have to do with getting the loan approved? The DGI is this, 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 and I'm, I'm arguing with the guy just because I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, that was... 15 yeah. years ago and, and there probably could be no better advice for the people that have gotten into the industry as LOs in the last several years than that right now I mean that's something that will become more important as people are trying to make more you know to make as much as they made with less you want to eliminate all of those barriers as it moves throughout the process as much as you possibly can. So great advice for um, those who are new into the industry for sure. If you weren't in mortgage, what would you be doing? Mm, it depends. How much money do I have when I'm doing it? <laughs> money doesn't. Money is not the object. Money does not matter. If money doesn't matter, I would probably own a little diner or a food truck and I'd be cooking doing my thing, getting really excited. Um, uh, I am not thin, as you have noticed. <laughs> I know You're my awesome food just how well. you are, Femi. <laughs> I'm proportionately large. <laughs> <laughs> You're just tall. Um, but, but what kind of food? So food truck, what kind of food? What's your favorite? Um, so I, I used to own a bakery when I lived in Delaware a long, long time ago. I won me a Best of Delaware Award way back in way back in the beginning of the world. Um, and I, I just loved cooking. I did uh, I did a lot of baking. I did sweet goods. We uh, we sold things to hotels and other such. And you know I did very well with that. But I'm a big fan of uh, of lots of Italian cooking. But I bring in some other fancier I, I bring in some other fancier techniques. Like uh, I've got a lasagna that is shelf ready to sell. Um, like I could, I could take it to any place and go. Uh, there's a wonderful restaurant called Tallulah's Table in uh, Kenneth Square. It's one of the best places to, to eat in America. You gotta get your reservations like a year in advance. And I used to bring food to the chefs there when they would come in. Like I'd bring a little lasagna or I'd bring a, a, a shredded beef sandwich or a, I'd bring cookies. And uh, I, got a, I, got, I got an oatmeal cookie that is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you take, um, take your normal oats like you were gonna make a cookie and I dust them with cumin and cayenne pepper, and then I toast them in the oven so that you release the oils from the uh, uh, the oils from the oats, and you actually get a little bit of that smoky flavor from the cumin. Um, and then you essentially just make a, a regular a regular oatmeal cookie, but instead of using raisins, I'll actually use candy ginger and a couple of different types of black cherries. So you yeah. end up with this kind of uh, like spicy kick in like this really exciting piece. So yeah. I, like I'd be I'd be big on cookies there. Uh, my lasagna doesn't use any cheese. I actually just make a nice a nice bechamel sauce. It's um it's a it's a really blonde roux that you add boiling milk to, and I uh, use white pepper and nutmeg. So you get this really kind of uh, like this bright lightness in behind what's going on. And instead of like the chunky or thick ricotta cheese, it's just completely smooth and creamy. And you're never going to have anything that's more creamy than cream. So just using the bechamel and using a little bit oh. of cream. Or, or milk with lasagnas make completely different things. I do my sauces from scratch. I do my everything from scratch. So literally, I would just be cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking and cooking and, you know, just doing that, it. 
That is fantastic. You totally, as you can probably tell by having met me too, um, have run into another foodie. I love food. I, I mean, it's just, it's just kind of one of those things that that um, I'm going to be showing up at your house at some point to have that lasagna. So <laughs> I'm down. I got. I make a steak au pois that's pretty darn good. I've got. I've got about. Uh, I got about seven or eight things that are that are shelf ready. They can just be sold. <laughs> That is so cool. That is so cool. Um, and speaking of coming to your house, tell us a little bit. Um, I wanted to know your favorite thing that you do outside of work, but I'm going to change it up a little bit because I just found that you're moving from Florida to New Hampshire, um, which is like a big move anyway. Someone that lives part time in Minnesota. I'm like, why would you do that? But you have a reason. Um, but what are you most looking forward to about New Hampshire? My brother and my family are, are, are up there. I get to uh, I get to spend time with his kids, which is just so much fun. You know, I am definitely the crazy uncle that does. I, mean, I can see that. To do. But being uh, being two or three miles away from them, I'm really looking forward to family time and being able to just do all those fun things that I couldn't do as a kid. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm really looking forward to. The other thing I'm looking forward to is not leaving my house between October and April because <laughs> no to snow. <laughs> I agree completely, completely, <laughs> especially when it still happens in April in the first part of May. So, you know, it's like it's a little bit too long for for pretty much all of us at this point. So one of my favorite days was in April in high school, my junior year. Uh, it was literally like the second week of April, like April 14th or something like that. And there was a snowstorm in New Hampshire that was something that we never have. It, well, not that we never had, but it was like, it was ridiculous. They canceled school early and they had everything else out. And me and about three of my friends just went out and started digging out the teacher's cards. And I'm telling you, there was a, we went to a big high school. There were about 3,000 people in three grades. I'm telling you, I had a line of 20, 25 teachers, all with 20 bucks a piece that were just saying, go dig out the uh, car. <laughs> they didn't want to go walk out in the snow as adults. They're like, the hell with this? <laughs> that is awesome. Whatever. You're like, I'm going to make 100 bucks in 20 minutes? Yes. <laughs> exactly. Especially when you're that age. That's like That was like big money. Oh, that yeah. was his. We uh we had a little bit of fun after that. We had a little bit of fun. I don't know that we spent the money wisely, but we had a little bit of fun. Well, yeah, there is that. I think I could probably talk to you forever. Um, you have been a, as you always are. Um, you've participated in a lot of our um, networking sessions and other conversations, and we always just really appreciate you because we know that you're someone that if we need a little pick me up any day. Um, as I'm sure other people within the network feel that too. We always know that we can count on you to just make light of things and make us see things a little bit differently. So we really appreciate you here. Well, I'm happy to be part of the family. I'm happy to get all the assistance from the uh, the wonderful TMC partners and the other people that we've uh, been able to talk to. I've been able to make connections with multiple other companies to help us troubleshoot what's going on. And I mean, it's really important because everybody has different experiences. And when you're part of a networking group like TMC, you're really able to connect with people that have all kinds all kinds of experience. So it helps to solve problems faster. So I'm very happy to be part of the team. And uh, uh, this was a ton of fun. It was a ton of fun. Thank you so much for doing this with me. All right. I will talk to you later. Yeah. Bye.